Hey friends, my name is Dylan Bates, the Final Cut Bro. A comment I've been seeing a ton on my channel is people that are taking off from the Adobe Premiere ecosystem and jumping over into the Final Cut Pro ecosystem. So I thought it'd be helpful creating a video showing how to use Final Cut Pro from the perspective of somebody who might have used Adobe Premiere. So I'm going to show you all the different features that you need to know to get editing. And there are a lot of pro features that I'm going to be covering just so that you can get back into your workflow as quickly as possible. Once you've opened up Final Cut Pro, it might look something like this. Now you might actually have a project over here on the left side labeled Untitled, so you can actually right click on that and close it if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new library. Now a library within Final Cut Pro is very similar to a project in Adobe Premiere. So to create a new library, you'll just go on up to File, New, and select Library. Now from here, we can label this whatever we like. I'm just gonna call this Premiere to FCP and then push Save. Over here on the left-hand side, we have this window. This is going to be your media browser, so your bin or keyword collections as they are called in Final Cut Pro are all going to be over here along with all of your media. And the bottom is where your sequences, AKA the timeline is going to be in Final Cut Pro. The right side is going to have all of your inspectors. So when you're working with effects or just needing to get metadata info, you can find that all here on the right side. So let's go ahead and first bring in some footage. To do that, you can push this big import media button or you can come up to the top left and push this button or you can go to file, select import media or you can also push command I. Then from there, you're just gonna locate the folder that has all of your footage in it. Now, what you can do is import just the folder and it's going to bring it in as a bin or like I said, a keyword collection into Final Cut Pro. So that can save you a few extra steps. After you've done that, you're gonna wanna come over to the right side and make sure you select leave files in place. Now, if you're planning on moving this project between different drives and stuff like that, you may wanna select copy to library, but if you wanna keep your file sizes down quite a bit and have have Final Cut Pro import media in the same way that Premiere does, where it leaves the files exactly as they were, then you're gonna wanna select leave files in place. Then you're gonna wanna leave the from finder tags and from folders keywords enabled, and that's just going to, as I said, bring in bins, AKA keyword collections. You have all these other features like analyzing video. I never touch those. If you wanna create proxy media as you import everything, you can actually do that under this transcode tab. So you can select create proxy media. You can select H.264, and then you can select the scale of that footage. So if you really want to work fast, maybe you're working on like a MacBook Air or something like that, you could drop it all the way down to 12.5% and that will vastly speed up that media if you are having any sort of trouble. But Final Cut Pro is so so well optimized for the Mac, I think you're gonna actually find that media tends to run a lot better in Final Cut than it did in Premiere. So because of that, you're actually less likely to need to use proxy media, which is always a huge plus. I'm gonna go ahead and disable create proxy media. Then scrolling down, you can actually see fix audio problems, separate mono and group stereo audio. All of those are available here. I just never touch those, but you can definitely do that if that's part of your workflow. Once we have our footage selected, I'm gonna go ahead and push import. So now we can see all of our footage up here in the top left hand side. Now when you first open up Final Cut, it's probably gonna look more like this and that you have thumbnails of all of your clips. But if you wanna have more of a Premiere Pro like structure where it's all listed out, you can select this icon right here and so now you can see the names of all of your footage along with the footage at the very top. As well as if your footage has audio, you can actually see waveforms happening here at the bottom of each clip. To get further view options, you can come up to the top right and find this film strip. If you click that, you can change the appearance of all your footage. Now you can't change it that much when it's in this list view, but you can change what it's grouped by. So if you wanted to do by date imported, something like that, that's totally up to you. As well as you can enable or disable the audio waveforms. I always leave those enabled. It just makes things really handy. You can also enable continuous playback. So if you have a lot of shots and you just wanna push play and watch it through in real time, you can definitely 
definitely do that. I'm gonna leave that disabled. But if you were to switch this back over to this thumbnail view, you can actually see that I can change the scaling on it so I can get as many pieces of footage up there as I need. We can also change how long each shot is. You can also search everything up here in the top right, which is really handy. And if you wanna create different collections, you can click this icon and you can get very granular with your filters. So let's say we wanted all of our shots that had S log in the name. We could just type in S log, just like so. It'll create this filter. Then we can select new smart collection and I'll just call this an S log filter. And so now anytime I bring in footage that has the name S log in it, it'll appear here in this smart collection that is barely scratching the surface, but that gives you the general idea. So on the left hand side, you can see that you have your library here. Now again, your library is very much like your project. I personally always create a new library for every single project that I'm creating. Within that library is something called an event. Now your event is going to actually contain all of the footage within your library, but you can have multiple events. So if I were to right click and select new event and just call this event two or whatever you wanna call it, you can actually import separate footage into that event. And so you can have separated events, say you have multiple shoot dates or something like that, and you just wanna quickly get between those. But then you can also create keyword collections which act very much like a bin. So if I wanted to create a new bin, AKA keyword collection, I would right click on the event and select new keyword collection. You can also do that with command K, you can assign different keywords. So let's just say I wanted this to be selects or something like that. Then I could jump back into my main event and just drag whatever footage I want into selects. So now these two shots are in my selects footage. What's really nice about keywords is you can actually have individual portions of your video within each keyword. So let's say I wanted just this part and this part, it's just I and O, same as in Premiere, inside of its own keyword collection. I'm gonna push Command K to create a new keyword and I'll just call this ultimate footage. Then I'll push enter. So I now have a keyword collection that just contains that individual piece of footage. So you can go through all your footage and quickly find the exact portions that you want. And then when it gets down to editing, you can just click in there and drag it all down to the timeline and it's all pre-cut up for you. So also up here in the top left hand where your media browser is, is the ability to take a look at your different sound effects folder, which I have a video showcasing how to import your own custom sounds into this folder. It's a little bit weirder than it should be, but it's not too difficult. You can also look at your media music that you've downloaded, your Apple TV content, everything like that. Then also up here at the top left is your titles and your generators. So when you wanna bring in different titles into your project, you would come up here to your titles. Now your generators tend to be stuff more like backgrounds or shapes, whereas the titles tend to generally be text, lower thirds, stuff like that. However, in Final Cut Pro, it does not come stock with an adjustment layer, which is crazy to me. That being said, I have a great adjustment layer for you to download, link down below. So make sure you go and hit that up, especially if you use a lot of adjustment layers in Premiere. Now, if you ever want to disable your inspector so you have more view, you can actually disable that in the top right. If you wanna disable your timeline ever, you can click on this icon. And if you ever wanna disable your browser on the left, you can click this. So let's go ahead and get into adding footage into our timeline. To do that, we're gonna to need to create a new project. So I'm gonna select that button. If you don't see all of these settings, that means you're gonna to need to push this bottom left-hand corner, use custom settings. However, if you don't know the settings that you wanna use and you just wanna use whatever you happen to film in, then you can just leave it as automatic and it's going to create the timeline based off of whatever the first piece of footage is that you drop in the timeline. But I'm gonna go ahead and use custom settings. We're gonna set this to 1080p at 2398 and we're gonna leave the rendering at Apple ProRes 422. That's gonna give you the best rendering speeds and the best quality. You also have your audio settings down here at the bottom for stereo, surround, and you can go all the way up to 190. 92 kilohertz, totally up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this project. So I'm gonna just call this Premiere 2 FCP. Then I'm gonna leave this in the current event. So that means it's going to save this timeline slash sequence within that original event that I had. So I'm gonna push okay. You can see here at the top, there is this timeline. 
So to bring footage into the timeline is very simple. All you need to do is click and drag and you can bring that down onto the timeline. You can also use these buttons here. So the far left is going to place your piece of footage above the primary timeline. The second button is going to insert it directly on the primary timeline, which is this dark gray area. And that's actually known as the magnetic timeline, which I'll get into in just a moment. And then the third button is going to place this at the very end of the timeline, which is a really great way to just quickly add in your footage. And then the last button is going to overwrite whatever's on the timeline. We'll just overwrite whatever it was there and you can see it's overwritten. You can also achieve those with Q, W, E, and D. Now, if you wanna bring just audio down to the timeline or just video down to the timeline, you can actually click this little down arrow next to all these buttons and select video only or audio only. You can also achieve that with Shift 1, Shift 2, and Shift 3. So let's get into the reason why I am obsessed with using Final Cut Pro over any other editor, and that is the magnetic timeline. If I have some footage here, you'll see how when I drag it onto the timeline, it just immediately pushes it to the far left. So again, if I bring this footage way over here, it's just going to drop it, push it to the left. This takes some getting used to, but it is essential in speeding up your workflow. I highly recommend that rather than trying to figure out ways to get around the magnetic timeline, you actually actually embrace it because it's going to save you so much time in the end. What's really great is let's say I want to delete a portion of this video. I can push B, select that piece of footage and then push delete. And you'll see how the footage just constantly slides over to the left hand side. And that is because it is in the magnetic portion of the timeline, this dark gray section. If you want to place something above, I'll just place this piece above that. This clip is now linked to this main clip. So if I drag this clip over to the right side it's going to follow along with that clip so that's going to save you a lot of time with ripple deleting and stuff because it's always ripple deleting so again if i select this portion select that and delete it it's gone or if i push r and get the range tool then i can select a portion of video and just push delete and now that portion of video is gone but i didn't have to drag all the footage over to the left hand side Again, this is gonna take some getting used to, but I'm gonna show you a few tips for getting around the magnetic timeline that's gonna save you so much time down the road. So a problem a lot of people have with a magnetic timeline is sometimes they don't want this secondary piece of footage to move with this primary piece of footage. So to get around that, you're gonna to need to push the tilde key. Now I've heard that in some countries their keyboards don't have the tilde key. If you don't have that key, just go on up to Final Cut Pro, go to commands, and you're gonna need to customize your keyboard shortcuts. Now by default, you can't change any of these shortcuts. So you're gonna need to click on this default button and select duplicate, and I'm just gonna call this tutorial. And now you can change these keyboard shortcuts however you want. So if I select the tilde key here, you can see the different um, buttons this is assigned to. And at the very top is the override connections which is what you want so if you don't have that tilde key go up into the top right of the search just look up override connections you'll find it here and assign that to whatever key you want so we'll select it and let's say I want it to be command s and so now when I push command s it's gonna have that feature so that's how you change your keyboard shortcuts which you probably want to do if you're coming over from Premiere into Final Cut Pro for example, selecting the arrow tool in Final Cut Pro is not V, but it's actually A in Final Cut. So if that's confusing to you, you can just select that and change that over really quickly. Then when you're done, you'll wanna push save and you should be off to the races. Okay, so back to what I was saying. If you don't want this secondary piece of footage to actually slide around with this primary piece of footage, you'll push and hold the tilde key and you'll click and drag and so now this is overridden. The connections will not happen so that um, I can slide this footage around as I need, as well as let's say I want this piece of footage to actually be connected to this piece of footage. If you click and drag, you can actually see this tail that comes along with the footage. That is showing the actual connection point of the footage down on the main timeline. If I want to change where this piece of footage is connected, I just need to push Option and Command click anywhere on this piece of footage and now that footage is connected to this clip. So if I move this clip, that footage is going to slide around with the secondary clip. 
So if you learn those features, the tilde key, option and command, you're gonna be flying through the magnetic timeline without any problems. You'll be able to do all the different features you had in Premiere, but you'll be on a much faster timeline. If you're really struggling, you can use the position tool to do similar features. So if I select the position tool with P, you can also find all your tools right here. So select trim, position, range, blade, zoom, and hand. We're gonna select the position tool, and now I can click and drag this footage anywhere on the timeline and it's gonna be a lot more like Premiere in that you can drag it anywhere you need to and it's going to create what's called a gap clip. A gap clip is completely empty and null. It's just there to take up space on the timeline. It'll come in completely black in your edit and it's completely transparent. So you can use the position tool. I typically only use this if I need to overwrite a clip but other than that, I generally avoid the position tool. So if you actually want to cut something in Final Cut Pro, you're going to push B, or you can come up here, click on this icon and select the blade tool. And it's going to give you these scissors. So now, rather than being the razor tool, it's actually the blade tool. But just like in Premiere, you can click anywhere to create some cuts. When it creates a cut, it's going to create this dotted line. That dotted line represents that this clip going to this clip is exactly the same. So when it has that dotted line, it means you can actually select that edit and then push delete and that edit will disappear. However, if you change things up, let's say I slide this edit over a little bit, it's now going to be a solid line, which means you can no longer select that edit and push delete. That's the absolute basics of working with the magnetic timeline. Now, if you're not particularly fond of how the magnetic timeline looks, maybe you want larger scaling, smaller scaling, you can very easily fix that. If you come over to the right side, you can find this film strip. So we can now change the zoom, which can also be achieved with command plus and minus. You can change how large the waveforms are. Now, none of my clips really have that large of waveform, so that doesn't matter. You can change how tall the clips are. Now, the one that's really nice is duplicate ranges. Now, duplicate ranges is going to show you, let's say if I push option, click and drag, you can see there are these zebra stripes at the top of the clip, and that is indicating that that portion of the clip is already used on the timeline. So if I delete that portion, you can see on this second version that there is no zebra strips happening there, indicating that that is not a duplicate. Now, if you want more of a layer-based setup in Final Cut Pro, you can jump over here to the left and find your index. Now, your index is really great for quickly searching through your timeline if you're looking for a specific clip. You have your search features here. If you've tagged a clip, you can find it here. And then the third option is rolls. Now, rolls lets you organize your footage and your audio really, really nicely so that you can clearly see on your timeline what you're looking at. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring in some sound effects. So to do that, I'm just gonna search up some sounds. I'm gonna just drag them like crazy all over the timeline like so. Okay, so I have some audio clips down on my timeline. If I look over here in the left in the roles panel, I can actually see that I have dialogue, effects, and music. Now, if you ever wanna assign a role on something, you just need to right click, select assign audio roles, and then select what type of role you want. Then here on the left hand side, there is this button called show audio lanes. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then now it's gonna create these lanes of audio, which is really nice. Without that, say this portion of audio is up here and it's all kind of mixed in together and it can get really confusing to look at and move around. So with show audio lanes enabled, you can see how the music is in its own lane, the sound effects are in its own lane, and the dialogue tracks are in their own lane. Now, if you wanna change the volume on a track, you can come over to the track and you'll find this really faint line going through the entire track. Go ahead and click and drag and you can actually see how loud the volume is throughout the video. Another really nice feature is let's say you want a certain portion of audio to duck down, you can push option, click, and that will create a keyframe. And again, you can select a couple spots to create keyframes, click and drag, and now the volume is going to drop in that specific portion. If the volume is moving a little bit too quickly, just push command when you're dragging it, and now you can do it by incremental decibels. You can also assign volume levels up here in the top right. Now, if you wanna see your levels for your audio, you can come up here next to the time code and click this icon right there. This is going to give you the audio levels that are happening throughout your video. Final Cut Pro does not have the most robust audio system. So you're probably gonna to need to mix this in something like Pro Tools or Logic, something along those lines. Just be aware of that. But there is a lot of features that you will need. Stuff like equalization, you can come up here to the top right with your audio selected and you can actually EQ your audio 
audio as you need. You can select how many bands it has. So if you want to get really granular with that, you also have the ability to enable voice isolation. Now I'm not going to get into voice isolation that much, but it's actually much more powerful than you would expect. And all you need to do is check that box, drag it up or down, play your audio, and you'll be amazed at how well it isolates the actual audio around a voice. There's a lot of other features like pan. We could change this to stereo left and right. So if you want it to play out of the left speaker, we can just drag the amount all the way to the left. Let's go ahead and get involved with the transform tools in Final Cut Pro. So if you need to scale an object, rotate an object, do anything of that sort, select your clip. Now you have a couple options to transform it. You can come here to the bottom left of the browser and click this icon. You can also achieve it with Shift T. Now I can click and drag this piece of footage wherever I need. I can also use the corners to scale it down and you can use this icon to rotate it. But if you want, you can actually come over here to the top right and click show on the transform tools. And now I can adjust the scale here. I can adjust the rotation and I can even adjust the anchor point of a video clip. Now, if I wanted to add some keyframes, I'm going to go ahead and go to the beginning here. I'm going to click add a keyframe. I'll move to the end of the clip and then I'll scale it up. So now this clip has this scaling feature happening on it. Now let's say that I'm not particularly happy with the animation. One way you could get rid of keyframes is by clicking this arrow. It'll take you to the keyframe. You can disable it and move back and then readjust the scale. I hate doing it this way though, and there's a much better way. To look at all of your keyframes happening in Final Cut Pro, go ahead and right click and select show video animation. You can also achieve that with control V. Now here in the video animation, you can actually see the different keyframes happening. And you can just click and drag these according to where you want the animations to happen. You'll also see the ability to crop here. So if you want to crop, you can click this icon. So you have a couple different features with cropping. So there's the trim feature and just click and drag this box down into however I need to crop it. The crop feature will actually just zoom into whatever portion you have. So let's say I want this shot to only be of the waterfall right there. You can do that. Then when you push done, it'll be zoomed in just like so. You also have the Ken Burns feature, which is really nice for creating nice, smooth zooms in your shot. So the green box indicates where it starts. The red box indicates where it's zooming into. So if I wanted to zoom slowly down into the waterfall, just like so over the entire duration of this clip, it's going to do that zoom. So I'll push done. I'm going to actually disable all the transform tools so we can see this. And you can see now we have this nice zoom in on the waterfall, just like so. Let's say that I hate all of these changes I've done. I'm going to come up here to the top right, click on this down arrow and select reset parameter. And now everything should be reset to how it was originally. So that's something important to know about Final Cut Pro is sometimes an icon's not apparent, just like the hide here it's not visible until you mouse over it. So if you think there should be something there, maybe try mousing over it and maybe it will appear. So as well as this video panel having the transform tools, it also has your opacity and it also has your blend modes. But what also can be achieved in the video inspector is working with all of your effects. If you want to apply an effect to a clip, come down here to the right side and click on this effects button. You can also achieve that with command five. Now all your effects will be categorized here on the left side and you're going to find both your video effects and your audio effects down here at the bottom. The most common one you're going to use in video is probably your color grading tools. Now by default, the color board is what Final Cut Pro uses. I personally am not a big fan of how the color board works. And if you are coming from Premiere, you probably won't like it very much either. What I recommend is actually using the color wheels. So we're going to go ahead and search up the color wheels. So I'll type in color wheels, go ahead and drag that on. And this is how you're going to apply every effect. It's just click and drag. Once you've done that, you can see in our effects inspector that the color wheels show up here. Now, something that's frustrating is you can't rename the color wheels as is I'm really hoping Apple adds in that feature someday. But for right now, this is just how we have to deal with it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this colorful icon and that's going to open up the color inspector. Now, rather than jumping into your effects and applying that effect every single time, you can actually just use the key keyboard shortcut command six, or you can also just click on this icon here at any time and that will open up your color inspector. 
Now by default, it's probably going to look like this color board. So let's go ahead and change that up in preferences. Go to the top left, select preferences, then under general, go to the bottom and select under color correction, the color wheels. This is going to by default set up the color wheels so that every time you push command six, it's actually just going to create some new color wheels, which is really, really nice. So on the right side of each wheel, you can adjust how dark or how bright a value is. So our shadows, we could bring those down. Our midtones, we could bring up and our highlights we could bring up. Now this is gonna look really bad. This is just for the sake of demonstration. On the left side is your saturation. So bringing it up is more saturated in that tone, bringing down is less saturated in that tone. Then of course in the middle, you can just click and drag and push your tones to whatever they need to be. Then if you're unhappy with your changes, you can just click on this icon to actually reset each of the values. Now something that's super important is being able to see all of your video scopes when you're doing color correction. So to do that, go on up into your view, go down to show in viewer and select video scopes. And now we can see our scopes happening here on the left side. Now let's say we don't wanna see this actual viewer over here on the left hand side, just so we have as much screen real estate as possible. You can disable that with command control and one. Okay, so we've now got a more full view of our inspector. If we wanna change what type of scopes we have here, we can click on this icon and let's just say I wanna change this over to a histogram or perhaps I wanna change it over to a vector scope. Now something that's very important if you're working with skin tones is having a skin tone indicator. So you can enable that by clicking this icon, selecting show skin tone indicator. I think that should be enabled by default, but for some reason when you bring up a new version of Final Cut Pro, it doesn't seem to be. Now let's say you don't only wanna have your vector scope, but you also wanna have another type of scope. You can click on view and now we can get this secondary view. Now we've got our waveforms and we've got our vector scope. Now I'm gonna change these waveforms over to RGB overlay so they're all in one spot just like so. So now I can adjust my footage accordingly and we can see it all happening there on the scopes. So let's say you have a certain way that you are always setting up your workspace. So you got your color tools here, you've got your viewer here, your effects, everything. You can go on up into window, go to workspace and you can select save workspace as. And we could just call this coloring. So now anytime we wanna get into this particular workspace, you just go on up to window, go down to workspace and select your workspace that you wanna work with. I'm gonna push command zero and that's going to reset Final Cut Pro back to its default view. So now we've got our browser up here in the top left, we've got our timeline and we've got our basic inspector over here on the right side. Now one last thing I should add in coloring, let's say you want something like the curves editor. Instead, you can click on this icon and select color curves and so now you can create nice curves just as you would need to. You can do that with each color. Now something that every video editor needs to know how to do is speed ramp. So in Final Cut Pro, it's very simple. If you want to retime a clip, you can come on up here to this little speedometer, click that and you have all these options. So if we wanted to slow this down to 50%, we could do just that. Now I shot this video at 120 frames per second and this is a 24 frame per second timeline. So technically it should be slowing it down to 20%. So if we click up here and we go to the slow settings you'll see it's only at 25%. If we want to slow it down to the native speed, we'll actually just select automatic speed. Now what I did because I use automatic speed so much is I actually assigned that to something like option B and that just makes it very simple for me to do the automatic speed adjustments on my clip without needing to jump into that menu. Now if you have a separate part of your video that you want to be at a different speed, you can push shift B and that will actually create a blade in the speed adjustment or you can come on up here and select blade speed. So now we have this cut and I can actually adjust the speed of this clip on the left by dragging these handles here to the desired speed. Or we can click this down arrow and we could select custom and we can put in an exact percentage that we want. So let's say I want this to be 17% speed um, or let's say I want it to be 170% speed. So now it'll speed it up accordingly. So you have all of those options by clicking that down arrow. Um, you can also select fast or slow options here or just normal. There's a ton of functionality there. If you wanna adjust the duration of your speed ramp, that's where these gray handles come in. So if you drag these out, it's going to take this long for the clip to go from normal speed down to the full 20%. So you can adjust your speed ramps just like that. If you wanna adjust the actual 
actual position where your speed ramp takes place, go ahead and just double click on that handle and click edit source frame. And then we can slide that over to the right, slide that over to the left, so we can adjust the actual moment that that speed ramp begins. Then you can double click that again, it'll go away. You can also get rid of the speed ramping altogether if you want it just to be a hard cut on the speed by disabling that speed transition. So now it'll go from normal speed down to immediate slow motion. That's the absolute basics of speed ramping in Final Cut Pro. I do have a full fledged tutorial that covers every speed ramp feature in Final Cut, so make sure you go check out that video. So if you want to apply a mask in Final Cut Pro, it's quite a bit different from Premiere, where in Premiere you can kind of go into your inspector, just add a mask directly from there. If you want to do it in Final Cut Pro, you're going to need to go down to your effects browser, and then you'll want to scroll down to the masks category, and you can see all of these different masks here. So I'm going to use the draw mask, and once I've applied that, I can now draw on here and create a Bezier mask of sorts, just like so, and now this clip has been masked. Then any of the settings you want to shift, you would go over here to the right side in the effects browser. We could change it over to something like a B spline mask. We can change the fill opacity. We could invert the mask. All of those settings will be found here. But let's say you have a particular effect that you only want in one central location on your clip. That is where the shape masks come in handy. Let's apply something like the aged film look just so you can really see that this is applied. Then if I wanted this aged film look to only be applied on the center where my wife is, then I would click on this add shape mask feature that's hidden. Make sure you mouse over it and it'll appear. Add shape mask. Then we can apply that to wherever we want in the frame. And you'll see you have your shape mask right here in the effects Browser. Now, if you want to keyframe where the shape mask goes, you can click on this button here to create a keyframe, and then we can just slide it over. But let's say that you want to do it the new and fancy way of tracking it. Let's go ahead and completely delete this effect. And if we want to apply this over just directly onto where my wife is, I can actually click and drag the effect directly onto her, and Final Cut Pro is going to know that that is an object that is trackable. So I'm going to drag that directly onto my wife. Then I'm just going to push Analyze and Final Cut Pro is going to go through and track all the way. We've now got this tracked effect happening across the scene. Very, very simple to just click and drag. You can do that with just about anything. So if I wanted to apply text, let's say I go, we'll do a basic title. I'll drag that directly onto my wife there. But let's say that I want to just use the tracking data that it's already created. I can click on this down arrow. Then I can select the object track under the tracker settings there. And so now this text will actually move along with our object just as it should. Something else I want to quickly cover is titles. In Final Cut Pro, again, you'll find your titles up here with your titles and generators. Now, I have a lot of plugins installed, so it's probably going to look considerably different for you. But let's say that I want to do something like this basic title, which I know for sure you're going to have. I'll just drag that onto the timeline. And if you want to edit the title, you can actually click and drag directly on the video. So if you want to adjust the text directly on there, you can actually just double click on it and then we can write something like subscribe. Then you can go over to the right hand side where you can actually locate the font of your choice. So something I use a lot is Roboto. And then we go into our fonts and I could adjust this to bold. We can change the sizing, the alignment. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll find the face options. So we can change the color on this as needed. But let's say there is a title that you use all the time. You constantly use this exact font, this exact boldness, the sizing, everything. Then what you can do is come up to the top, click on this, and then you can select save all format and appear appearance attributes and so you can just label this whatever you want you'll push save and so now if we add in a new title and we want those that exact format we can actually just come up here click on subscribe and so now it's got that gold text it's got the same font size same font, everything. So we just need to write in whatever we want. Okay, so something that's really common in Premiere is the nesting of clips. In Final Cut Pro, that is called a compound clip. So to create a nested clip, AKA a compound clip, select the clips that you want to be in that clip, right click and select new compound clip and push okay. The next thing I'm gonna show you is applying transitions. Now, transitions are directly next to the effects panel. So there's this icon for effects. Go ahead and click on this icon for your transitions. If you want to apply a transition, you're just gonna click and drag it to the clip that you want. So I'll go ahead and apply it right there. And I should have changed this out. So I'm gonna drag a clip on top and we're gonna replace that. 
Okay, so now we have the transition happening between these two clips. If you wanna change the duration of a transition, you just click and drag on this edge and adjust it accordingly. If you wanna change the position of the transition, you can click on this icon here and drag it left and right. And again, I'll just slide that out so it's much longer. Now in tandem with transitions comes a lot of J and L cuts, especially with audio. Now if you wanna do apply a J and L cut, it's very easy when you're in the audio lanes view because you have your audio right here and your video up there. But if you're not in the audio lanes view, you can actually double click on any of your segments down here at the bottom and that will give you the audio of that clip so that you can create your J and L cuts. Okay, so this video has already been going really long. If this video is successful, I will definitely do a part two because there's so much more I can cover. Once you're done with your edit, you're probably gonna wanna export. Make sure you've selected your timeline, then come up to the top right, click on this icon, and just select export file. Now, if you have settings that you use frequently, I recommend you go to add destination and then I'll drag over export file. I can rename this to custom or whatever you wanna call it. Then I can make my changes. So let's say I always want it to have video and audio and I want the video codec to always be H.264. Final Cut Pro's export system is far from as robust as the one that's built into Premiere, but you can pick up compressor for 50 bucks. It's very, very robust in all of its export options. So I'm usually using H.264 or I'm generally using Apple devices 4K. And that is because it gets processed very, very quickly on YouTube, so that is a huge plus. And finally, if you're doing a very professional export, you need the maximum quality, then I recommend that you do Apple ProRes 422, and that is going to export very, very quickly out of Final Cut Pro. So again, when you wanna export, you just go up to the top right, you select the format you want, you can go through your settings here. You can go to the roles, and if you want a multi-track, you can actually change it to a multi-track format here, which is really handy if you're using the roles feature. Then you can go to next, save it as whatever you want, and you should see here in the bottom right, it gives you a rough estimate of the size of the file. Then you'll just go ahead, export it, and you should be set. So that is a broad overview of how a Premiere Pro user might use Final Cut Pro. I really hope this was helpful to you, both to people that are using Premiere, jumping to Final Cut Pro, and to maybe new users of Final Cut Pro in general. So thank you so much for watching. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.